guys, it's Vaughn, and today I am so excited because I'm introducing my new housework series. Don't worry, nothing's changing drastically on my channel. This is just a new place to house all of my videos that relate to home improvement, home decor, home repairs, and things of that nature. As you guys may know, I have a passion for home improvement, and I've expressed this through content relating to this house that we bought two years ago. As a first time home buyer, I just really want to share my experiences in a very candid, kind of relatable way. And so with this series, I want to continue sharing my home improvement feats, right? Like I've been doing, but I'd like to be able to also share bite-sized little home improvement tidbits that I do on a regular basis because let's just face it, I am a busy bee when it comes to my house, you guys. I am literally always working on something and I don't always film it because it doesn't seem like it's worth an entire video. So with this series, I like to be able to include little bite-sized snippets of things that I'm working on in the house. I plan on sharing everything about my home improvement experience, everything from seasonal home decor to more transformational projects. So there's a lot in store, but I think overall my goal was just to be able to have a central location to house all of my home improvement videos. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Please let me know if you guys plan on regularly watching this series. I'm actually not even sure when the next housework video is going to be up, but you know what? I'm just going to be sharing it sporadically as I'm working on projects in my house. But I will say this, I do have another one coming very, very soon because we are going to be changing one of these light fixtures in this house. Can you guess which one? <laughs> So what I'd like for you guys to do when you watch this series is to get some ideas, some inspiration, you know, get those wheels turning. In this series, I promise to always share with you guys the details of everything, where I got stuff, how much I paid for it, and I'll provide links when I can. So I hope you guys are as excited about this series as I am. Because this is the first video of the series, I'm doing like this whole intro sort of thing, but I won't be doing this for the other video, so don't worry. <laughs> But yeah, I'm excited for you guys to dive into this content and let me know for sure in the comments below if you like the way I have this thing set up, if you like um, the projects that I shared in this first episode, if you like my intro, let me know in the comment section below and let's go ahead and get into this content. I hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs> This first project has to do with my backyard. We're going to be replacing a select few of our privacy fence post caps with these solar lit ones. You guys might know that we got this privacy fence built last summer and it spans the entire perimeter of the yard. So it's like a hundred feet, super large. And the post caps that we have are fine. They're kind of factory, came with the fence, but they don't really give us any benefits besides protecting the posts. So we wanted to upgrade them and give them a little bit more functionality. I love using LED solar lighting for my outdoor spaces. I use it on the front of my house as well as the back, as you can see. It's cost effective, low maintenance, eco-friendly, affordable, and sustainable. All we're doing here is just assembling each of them. They have to be done one by one. And I got these from Home Depot, you guys, and they were about $20 a piece. So they're kind of expensive, but once you buy them, you don't really need to worry about them again. And they're super easy to install, as you can see. All you do is take off the old post cap and put this new one just right on. It fits on like a puzzle. Really, really easy to do. The only real work associated with these is the assembly and deciding where to put them we had to take some time to do that but we eventually just landed on putting them every third post so it turned out to be pretty even and nice keep watching I'm gonna show you guys what they look like at night but just one more solar LED project before we do that I am using this little light up ladybug by Patriot lighting I love this company they provide a lot of products for Home Depot and Menards, my favorite places to go. And it's easy to assemble this thing. I'm just going to um, attach those two pieces and then turn on the solar lighting capability. And this little solar panel is flexible so you can adjust it to face the sun directly to maximize the lighting. And I'm just going to stake this thing down into the corner of my daughter's little playground right here to give it a little bit more light. This goes really good with our theme for her playground. And I think that thing is three lumens, so it's pretty bright. You guys saw when I put those solar lights on her playground before in a previous video. And I just wanted to kind of show you guys what everything looks like at night when all the solar lights are lit. It's really, really cool. I think it's just enough light to provide some brightness for the area. Also sets a nice ambiance, but not too bright to where it's disturbing our neighbors since we can't turn them off. I think these post caps really set off any privacy fence. You could choose to do each one, which I think would look great, but I like how we kind of got it spread out. 
Next, we're moving into my formal living room and I'm going to tackle a project that I've been wanting to for a while and that is this rug, honey. My husband originally picked out this rug and it looked good in the store, right? Especially under the fluorescent lighting, but almost immediately when we got it home, we started to kind of second guess. We were trying to figure out how to make it work, but it just never seemed to click. Eventually, I was able to convince him that I could find something better for our living room. So I went to a pretty high-end rug boutique that was liquidating you guys and I was able to get a rug for a steal. It was like 80% off. So I'm taking up the old rug and I'm gonna try my hand at putting it in my daughter's room. But to be honest, you guys, it's been in there for a few days now and so far it's shedding all over the place because it's getting a lot more use in her room than it did in the living room. So we're probably gonna end up getting rid of it. But yeah, when I was in the store, I sent my husband a picture of the rug with also some examples of other living rooms similar to ours that had a rug like this. And he loved it. So I was like, all right, we're safe to make the purchase. So I brought this bad baby home and I really love it, you guys. This is the heaviest rug ever. It's very high quality. It really just hugs the floor and there's none of that curling business happening on the corners. To tie the table into the scheme a little bit more, I'm just gonna bring in some more of those black and blue hues with these two coffee table books. I'm just gonna pop them right underneath my candle and voila we're all done you guys I just feel like this fur rug was doing a lot yet not enough at all I feel like bringing in this kind of black and gray and blue rug really is just so much more elegant it exudes vibes of expensiveness and it really ties into the elegance of our staircase and our light fixtures that fur rug was more of a blur and I feel like this one gives more definition to that area underneath the coffee table also makes you appreciate the floor a little bit better just overall so nice but let me know what you guys think down in the comments moving on to my dining room that's right across the way from my living room I wanted to tackle these faux plants that I got from at home a few weeks ago right home from the store is kind of an unfinished look you can still see the tag on the inside of the planter and also these little tins sit really low so it doesn't really maximize the height of these faux plants so the first thing I need to do is figure out a way to lift those tins and then camouflage it I went straight to Menards and got this recycled wood mulch and green moss filler this stuff comes in a couple different colors and can be used for potting succulents or for projects like what we're doing today. I went with green so that it can match the moss balls that are already sitting on top of the dining room buffet. So first things first, I gotta find something to provide some height for those little tins. So I'm going out back and grabbing some of the old landscaping bricks that we're actually having redone as we speak. So I'm grabbing those so that I can put at the bottom of that planter so that I could sit that thing on top of it. I think these bricks are a great idea for this because it's gonna provide some nice sturdiness to this planter so that my daughter can't just tip it right on over. But also it's a great way to get more use out of some old materials that we already had. And if weight is not an issue for you, you could always use styrofoam or some other, you know, lightweight material. Um, but just with the bricks, just a quick tip, make sure that they're as even as possible so you don't get that rocking motion because that's gonna be kind of annoying. Once I did some rearranging to make sure that it was nice and sturdy, it was time to move on to adding in the mulch. With adding the mulch, I just wanted to make sure that I was getting it within the tin, but also all along the sides to fill in all of those gaps. I didn't want any emptiness because I feel like later it would settle and then you would see that there's mulch missing. So definitely wanna take some time to to push it all the way down it's gonna fall over the floor no worries we'll just sweep it up I used about a whole bag just for one of these planters so it uses quite a bit but I'm just making sure that it's nice and even and then right on top of that I'm gonna start spreading out my moss now with the moss I'm gonna use half of the bag for this planter and then the other half of the other planter so I'm trying to make it stretch but if you need more definitely feel free this stuff is pretty cheap so I'm just going to try and spread it all around to cover the mulch for the most part the mulch really is not meant to be seen it's meant to be more of a filler so that your moss or whatever can sit right on top of it. Now again, I wanted to use the green color to match with what we already had going on, but for the fall, I might switch this out for the tan colored moss, just because with fall, things are not as green, you know? But I don't know, because the plant is still gonna be green, so we'll see how I feel. I'm just gonna do the same thing for the other side, putting those bricks in there, sitting the planter right on top, pouring in that mulch, spreading out that moss, and cleaning up my mess. And finally, I am done with this project and I can say that these fake plants are good to go. So this is what they look like now. Very, very convincing, I must say. Kind of looks like I bought it that way, if I must say so myself. I am a huge fan of these planters, you guys. I did get these from at home, just like the fake plants. They look like clay or stone or something. So I really like that, but they're just really lightweight plastic. So yeah, that's it for this project. Now, wait till you see what I have coming up. 
These last two projects are probably my favorite. They are dealing with my laundry room, but I'm starting outside because I am repotting this fern plant that I got from uh, Home Depot. Ferns are great because they do not require a lot of sun and honestly not even a lot of water either. So if you're not really good with a green thumb and all that, I would highly recommend fern for inside your home. And I'm putting these in my laundry room so I felt like it was best to get a fern because they don't require a lot of sun and it's not that bright back there. And I really like this planter. It's a nice matte black and it's got some texture so this is going to be super cute on my little floating shelves in my laundry room. I also got this little fake succulent plant that I got from Hobby Lobby. I just really like the stripes. So we're just gonna pop these two bad babies up on that shelf. I'm going to actually move this fake fern that I had and I'm only gonna relocate it to the top of those cabinets there. And these two bad babies are gonna go on this floating shelf. And I just think it's the cutest little combo. It really adds some life to this space and gives you something inspirational to look at when you're doing your laundry. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, we have to figure out a solution for this soap and towel situation as it relates to this utility sink. This sink literally has no counter space and what we've been doing so far is just trying to make it work. But today I'm inspired and I think I have the solution. I went to Menards and got this super cheap 18 inch towel bar, which comes with its own mounting hardware. 18 inches was perfect because I wanted this thing to fit center in that area right underneath the cabinet. And of course I'm gonna use my handy dandy level to make sure that this thing is not going up crooked. And I'm just going to eyeball it with the centering of it all because it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just gonna be holding some towels. I'm gonna use my pen or you can use a pencil if you wanna be safer just to mark off those holes. And then if you have a drill, this is the time to use it, but I don't at this moment. So I'm just using a hammer and the nail. When I started on this process, I realized I probably needed some drywall anchors and I always have these on hand. So I just went ahead and reached for one, no biggie. And I use a hammer to tap them in. Some people, I don't know, people do it different ways, but this makes it a lot easier for me. And you guys already know this, but I like using the drywall anchors because it makes the screws go in so much tighter. It really grips them and gives you that really sturdy, confident fit. And especially with something like a towel bar, because this is something you're going to be handling quite often, you're gonna always be touching it. It will get loose over time. And when you have those drywall anchors in there, it just gives it a lot more sturdiness. So I'm just gonna go ahead and screw those in, make sure they're nice and tight, and then we're done. Now on to the soap dispenser situation, okay? I went on Amazon, you guys, and ordered this floating soap dispenser. I'm so excited about this, honey. This thing was only like $15. Of course, I will put the links below. This entire thing is plastic, but it's made to look like stainless steel. It has its own mounting hardware. So we're just gonna go ahead and position this thing. I want it to be pretty center, yet still over the sink in case some soap drips down, especially since I'm anticipating a little bit of a learning curve with my daughter using this thing. Gathering all my mounting hardware, we've got this 3M adhesive strip and some wall anchors and screws. Now I'm thinking if you don't want to damage the wall with screws, you could always just use the 3M strip or you could use them together in tandem to really make sure that it's nice and sturdy. I only use the screws and the wall anchors. All right, now for the fun part, that little plastic lid pops right up and then you can add your soap. It's also really easy for doing refills and stuff. Now let's take a look at the before and see how far we've come, all right? Everything kind of balancing on this little tiny ledge, not much of any counter space, really not making much sense. And now here's the after where we have a floating soap dispenser for ease of use. We've got some beautiful microfiber towels that I also got off of Amazon. They're gray, they blend in really nicely with the decor. And we've got this really kind of shiny chrome finish on all of the hardware, so it's all kind of coordinating together, which I love. And it really just looks so nice. I think that soap dispenser is the star of the show. You guys have got to check it out. I will put the link below. So here is the door as you come into my laundry room. I feel like it's such a nice welcoming little feel. You can come right here, you know, get you some soap, you know what I'm saying, wash your hands. As I mentioned, these towels are microfiber and they're really lightweight, so they dry super fast, you guys. And I really wanted that. I didn't want anything super bold right here because it's a really small space but yeah girl I love it and I think I'm finally done with this laundry room so let me know what you guys think about all of the changes and upgrades so that is it for the debut episode of my housework series I hope you guys enjoyed this video please let me know if you did or if you didn't as always thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you in my next one Mwah. bye